been the song sung and repeat on the lips of many Nigerians since the president, Bola Tinobu, announced the removal of fuel subsidy, which was well termed the scam that had to end. Although a lot of Nigerians saw reason and understood why subsidy are to go, one could safely conclude they were not prepared for the gruesome storm that would ravage their households. According to NBS report in May 2023, inflation rate grew to 22.41% from 22.22% in April. Not so much increase at inception, but the dance began. Inflation swung its ape rhythmically as it steadily ascends the stairs of poor standard of living, accompanied with loud tunes of dismay from citizens. One would think inflation confused the wailing for encouraging shunts to keep going faster. That would have perhaps been a good explanation for 28.9% recorded in December 2023. Although the CBN governor, Yemi Kadoso, expects headline inflation to fall to 21.4% in 2024, it's not a surprise that piece of information had the effect of a single drop of water in the Sahara Desert on a very hot afternoon in February. Here is why. The government should not wait for the whole country to protest about food crisis because the global movement against hunger have, is there to assist the farmers. The uh, All Farmers Association of Nigeria also is there to assist farmers, to organize farmers. And the government should not wait because it is uh, de delicate because food crisis is one of the worst crises. I want my government to help us. It is the two dear. The tomatoes for the buy the crates eight thousand. But now with the buy at twenty something. Pepper fifty thousand. Pepper we saw with the buy before till five. If it were six thousand. Now pepper now fifty thousand. If it's cheap, when I be forty eight. I be make government. May they help us. May they come to we rescue. May they help us. If now if now farm my money they won't give up. May they find one or two to take help us. I beg. Need money. Till two dear. We they suffer, we they hungry. We go buy lots today for before, before they break. We go yes, say they don't put money. We need money, money not there. At least hard. Okay, I buy I buy mangi yesterday. Yesterday, so I buy mangi about almost eighty-five. I hear this morning say mangi now is twenty-five thousand for a carton. And the demand don't cost one one eight, one one eight, one 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 eight. Why? 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 Good job now. Uh, my begin seven begin. I got seven begin. I don't get the thing where I would give and But this thing why they talk, so I they use pigeon English they talk on because now we're on a day. We the verse or what did they happen for the country? We need God to help us all because where the country they be, I will not understand. So say one cube of magin at 20 naira. Basket of gari na amo even rice self. Food insecurity in this country is that. The, it seems that to be that the government is not interested in the, the, uh, that is on, on farming. We get to make the government in, have interest in farming, and though insecurity also, government should provide uh, something that will make uh, uh, that is secure, the secure farmers when going to farm, and um, also. Be ready to assist farmers. Yeah, bro, I say I don't tire. Beans don't go five thousand. Rice don't go seventy five thousand for bag now. Nah. So I don't know where they go. When they bring the bread money, John now. Like the white uh, beans basket now nah, three five. Last week we said three three three. Now nah, this week they don't go three five. Today again they enter three seven. Now nah, nah, today again now nah, brown beans and honey beans alone don't nah, go five thousand. Nigeria boasts of four refineries. Yet, one day attempts them shy of useless, since they weren't functioning. However, many Nigerians had looked up to the announcement that a private refinery would start operating in the middle of 2023. But like promises of better times in the land, it eluded that year. But more good news came in. The Potakot refinery was coped to start functioning by the end of the year. That came to pass 
as the first stage of the rehabilitation was successful. Price of gas was projected to come down after festivities of the new year. But as at mid-February 2024, it remained at an all-time high. On 19 December 2023, the National Assembly frowned at the inability of the Presidential Steering Committee on the Compressed Natural Gas CNG initiatives to account for the money allocated to it from the 500 billion naira meant for palliatives. Speaking on behalf of the Senate and House of Representatives Joint Committee on Petroleum Resources, Senator Jarigbe Agam Jarigbe alleged that the Presidential Committee was carrying out its activities in secret. According to the lawmaker, the budget of the Ministry of Petroleum Resources is neither here nor there. It does not represent the policy directions of Mr. President on the decade of gas and usage of compressed natural gas as an alternative source of fuel. The steering committee on the Presidential Compressed Natural Gas Initiative has also refused to brief the National Assembly on the activities and programs they are carrying out. The activities are shrouded in secrecy and the Ministers of State, Petroleum Resources, Oil and Gas are totally in the dark as to the activities of the Presidential CNG Initiative. In trying to get self-help, the Presidential CNG Initiative has embarked on a fundraiser which comes up tomorrow in order to extort funds from so-called stakeholders. As a parliament, we do not align ourselves with running government programs in disregards of the provisions of the law. We cannot achieve what Mr. President wants without providing for the CNG project and other very important projects in the Appropriations Act. Doing so will only open a window of fraud which will impact negatively on the citizenry. Let it be on record that the steering committee of the PCNGI cannot account for the funds already provided from the 500 billion naira approved for palliatives for the purpose of CNG advancement in the country. In 2018, we published a paper uh, about the uh, uh, feasibility studies on, on uh, modular refinery. My name is the, uh, I and the current vice chancellor of my university. And uh, we published a paper and we even mentioned there that if you have all the four refineries, as it were, Kaduna and the two in River State, uh, one in uh, Wari, if you have all of them working with the, with the, um, with the Dangote refinery coming on stream, uh, we projected 2022, 2021, 2022, 2021, yeah, uh, as it was planned for that time, in 2022. By 2022, I said we will still be having an energy, de energy deficit if four of them are working at 100%. Now you have the four refineries now. They, they, they are down. Dangote is just uh, about coming up now. Uh, the, the, your guess is as good as mine. And for any baby, any any child born in this country, uh, I don't want to count, count the deaths. There's an extra energy needs because uh, everything about us is energy. So if you look at that uh, report, it's, 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 it's available online on the feasibility study on the water refineries in Nigeria. Moni Botanacha, Professor Rimuruke, and Obong, who published that. Uh, we said the Dangote coming on stream might not even uh, help Nigeria. And you can hear in the news that uh, they want to import uh, the U.S. Uh, again, uh, through the cost-benefit analysis and then find out whether it will help uh, uh, the local consumers. Uh, I hope you are aware that there are a lot of products, particular products we produce in this country, but it's not for Nigerian markets. So uh, the question is that will Dangote refinery satisfy local markets? I don't think so. You need you need multiple refineries. Even as at that, we, we, we did predict that you need a minimum of twenty modular refineries producing at twenty thousand barrels per day capacity for this country to be uh, uh, get out of the energy poverty that we currently have, since we all rely mostly on uh, on petroleum products. So this 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 these are the challenges and everything. Again, like I said, we need to have a sincere conversation. The figures are there. Uh, Freedom uh, Bureau of uh, uh, of statistics uh, are there. Uh, they, are, they are all there. And the question is, how many of these mobile refineries have been issued licenses? How many of them are selling? Your guests are good at what they did with the with the allocation of crude oil and the rest of them. So there are a lot of publications that have shown that the processes might not have uh, achieved what the federal government intended. But again, we have to take some of the blame on our on, on ourselves too. So 
these are these are these are issues that we need to have sincere conversation on if we need to move on as a nation. For many Nigerians who dared to hope the refinery functioning would bring down the price of pump price of crude oil products, they were quickly aroused from the childlike dream by the statement of NNPCL's GMD Melikari after it was summoned by Senate Committee on Appropriations on the potential drop in pump price of petroleum owing to the expected functionality of refineries. Kiari clarified this comment after I was interrogated again. He explained that it might be possible to have a reduction, but it is not the main objective of the refineries. He buttressed that maintaining the energy security target has fostered the confidence that in 2024, Nigeria will become a net exporter of petroleum products. He, however, lamented the legal crude oil connection, costing the nation billions of naira. There will be total oil demand of up to 100 million barrels per day of oil equivalent in the energy mix. So oil and gas will not vanish. So oil will be bought for different purposes. It will be combated for different chemicals and different materials. But production of oil and gas will continue, but in a very cleaner way. And the countries that will survive this are those who are able to produce cheap, efficiently and quickly to the market. And our plan is to make sure that we become a player in that space so that our cost becomes low and people will buy from us. This is the plan. But in terms of the transition itself, we are focused on gas because we are actually a gas country and we are not an oil country. It's actually a gas country with associated oil. But we are historically focused on oil production because you know, producing gas takes longer time, bring taken into the market, and also it has lower margin. Therefore, everybody is focused on oil that brings that comes to the table quickly, and also it has bigger margin. And everything is changing now. Gas is the transition fuel. We are focused on creating the domestic gas infrastructure. We are already delivering them. The 2024 appropriation bill, tied the budget of renewed oil, laid before us by the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, is predicated on the oil benchmark of 77.86 dollars. And also, the output projection is 1780 uh, million barrels per day in terms of crude. And as you all are aware, there are a lot of uncertainty in the oil market. The oil price is coming down and the benchmark is going up. And I believe we need clarification. Also, as at last appropriation bill, we are doing 1.2, 1.3 million per barrel. Now we are having 1.70 million per barrel as contained in the appropriation act submitted by the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Okay. And I think I can just get this for you. There, I, if I remember part, part of it, you have over 4,800 illegal connections on our pipeline. Illegal connection. That means in some lines, within 100 kilometers of pipeline, Mr. Chairman, you will have as much as 300 insertions. That means every kilometer, you will have an insertion. And pipelines for being what they are, if you continue this insertion, even when you seal it up, it can no longer hold the pressure that it will do. Therefore, even when you produce the oil, you cannot deliver them at the required pressure, and therefore the volume will also be less. The situation we have in the Niger Delta in terms of security is a calamity. And I'm happy he spoke his mind, so let me also speak my mind. You don't have this situation anywhere else in the world. And I have the misfortune of sitting in very many fora where we are asked exactly what are you doing in your country. Mr. President, to engage non-state actors to protect critical access as the last resort of a, of a, for a solution to a massive challenge. It's very abnormal, sir. It's completely abnormal. 
it shouldn't have been, it should have happened, talk less of even involving communities in security of assets. The NNPC Limited's Chief Corporate Communications Officer, Olufemi Shuneye, in a statement on 7th February, announced successful commencement of oil production from the Apple West Field, located approximately 175 kilometers from the Takut. He said it would add 14,000 barriers per day condensate to the nation's production. As NNPC algebulates, the issue of oil theft and illegal refining crosses one's mind. Some have opined that the federal government might want to consider utilizing modes of operation of these illegal refineries to solve problem of unemployment and energy crisis, cuddling the country tightly. This started making visible impact with increased federal allocations and many legacy projects. We therefore urge Nigerians to disregard the antics of saboteurs and their sponsors who are fighting to have a change of leadership at the Navy to someone they can be able to manipulate. Ladies and gentlemen, we are also not unaware of harbour discontent against the Chief of Naval Staff by those who felt he is not from their part of the country right from when he was appointed. Allowing this element to win will be a defeat to our collective purpose and unity as a nation. Mr. President has shown that he has been tapped for assembling talent regardless of tribal and religious differences. His appointment were hailed as cutting across geopolitical zones and religious differences. We as an organization therefore pass a vote of well-deserved confidence on the Chief of Naval Staff, Vice Admiral Emmanuel Ogala, a true and unfaced patriot who has restored sanity to our maritime domain. We stand solidly behind him and shall continue to mobilize our people to support him and Mr. President for the good work. I expect, for example, that this issue of PMS refining, that we can bed it in a couple of months. Um, so that in that couple of months, Mr. Dangote has said his refining will start producing PMS by the end of June. Government said by July. Those are close periods. And June will come, July will come. Of course, there are doubts in the mind of Nigerians, and you don't blame them because they've heard all this. Uh, it will start producing this month, that month, this month, that they've heard it over and over and over again. So right now, it is fingers crossed. But if indeed we have gotten to that play point where it will happen, even we can begin to see changes even within the next six months. As far as uh, you know, some of these things are concerned because if you start producing in June and July, we can start reducing the amount we spend in, uh, in, in, in importing fuel into this country. You can begin to save on dollars. If we ramp up production and we produce more than we can consume, we can begin to export. All this can begin to happen over even a six month period. And Nigerians can begin to see the effect. When we start to do that, for example, that dollar savings and dollar earnings will help to improve on our dollar supply, you know, and we can begin to see elements of stability in our uh, uh, exchange rates. I want to refer you to there are a lot of media online. Um, I, can, I can refer you to data. When, going back to 2015, November 2nd, there was a, a Manchester Policy Week. Uh, I was in the UK then, and um, I did host a program. I did and hosted a program um, titled uh, Covering Crude Oil Theft, Buying with a Conscience. And in that, we had straight, and then we made a lot of uh, inputs. The Vice Chancellor of Federal Reserve of Petroleum Resources was there. Uh, the King of uh, Bakasi was present. Dr. Grimot Nane, a political economist, was also online. And then we provided a lot of solutions uh, about how to bring in these... Uh, uh, so-called uh, unlicensed uh, refiners, uh, bring them on stream, license them, give them appropriate technology uh, to service the uh, the business. Because as it's as, as you speak, like I mentioned before, it's all about demand and supply. There's a lot of demand, and if these guys are in business, that means they are meeting some level of demand, or, or else they would have been out of business. So in 2021, let's fast forward. In 2021, there was a committee uh, headed by uh, Senator Ita Enan. Then it was, it was special assistant to the presidency, 
uh, on the Niger Delta, I, pre- I remember. And then uh, with the help of the vice president of the country, Professor Sibanjo, there was a there was a um, um, there was a, a, a conference in Abuja. I was there, March 2021, if I recall very vividly well. And uh, and uh, a lot of recommendations came out of that, which uh, gave rise to the uh, the current committee and the Ministry of Petroleum Resources, headed by the permanent secretary. Uh, the, the solutions are, are clear there. Bring them in, register them, give them access to crude. Let them pay for it. Because there are two components. Um, uh, the way they access crude, okay, uh, that, that we could say it's illegal because they get it from those who bust into the pipelines. And there are a lot of security reports on that. There are a lot of evidence showing everywhere. But the refinery process itself, it's, 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 it, when you say illegal refiners, not necessarily. The refinery component says it's low level, mini, uh, a low level artisan refinery. But if you upgrade that, which is take out the pollution that the, that that it causes, and then you're able to register them as as we speak, uh, you can read the minimum that can be registered by the NMDPROA, which is the uh, the the former DPR, uh, DPRO. It's a uh, it's a uh, one thousand barrels, and there have been propositions to proliferate the whole of the country with a, with a thousand barrels per day uh, refining capacity. Um, uh, uh, access uh, m- multiple refineries that have community-based participation uh, that can be done and then uh, once you have community-based participation you have their BVN, they have access to crude and they, and they, take, they take out what they, uh, whatever they cannot produce is taken to a bigger catalytic uh, processing machine is what they call the uh, uh, FCCU fluid catalytic uh, unit so that they can crack it further to get uh, more products you know this this can be this this can be done and and again, don't forget, um, access to crude is a major problem. Uh, let's do mathematics. What is the OPEC quota for Nigeria? Uh, and what would the federal government be interested in, especially in terms of uh, the finances of this country? They would prefer to say, a meet up the OPEC quota, get some foreign currency, and, uh, and uh, keep our economy going since we're mono, majorly a mono economy, oil and gas. So uh, having this uh, refinery come on stream, it's a major problem. Again, questions should be asked. A lot of licenses were given out for modular refineries over 20, 20 or 15 in the past uh, how many years? Uh, how many of them are on stream now? Why are they not functioning? There is the problem of some of the modular refineries which mentioned that they have uh, they have problems with access to crude. So this, these, are, these are issues that need to be looked, looked into. And then another thing again we need to be very uh, uh, sure about is that energy issues are national security issues so uh, if you don't uh, I, I hear in the news that um, uh, one of the major uh, uh, refineries coming up is going to take crude from uh, from the u.s uh, so, so some professionals have asked questions about uh, how does this affect our security uh, do we say that uh, the uh, other refineries to who, are, who have licenses can also take from other countries for, for example russia uh, and then we are, and we are energy, we are crude oil producing nation. What are the effects on our economy? How would that solve our current problems? Will it increase it? These are questions. And at what level is our professionals involved? Are we sincere in the processes of uh, giving out uh, marginal fields? For example, there have been proposals that marginal fields should be tied to refineries. Uh, if you are issuing a license for marginal fields, they should, it should be able to be tied to refineries. Uh, I, I've also been of the opinion that uh, schools like the Federal University of Petroleum Resources, uh, which is University of Petroleum, how come they are not involved in the in the in the in the in the downstream uh, downstream sector or in the midstream or even in the in the upstream uh, um, upstream sector? Yeah, they can they can be syndicates like that. For example, where refinery, they could be engaged to be participant. Every user could be engaged to 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 partner or be in a some kind of operatorship with uh, Kaduna Refinery. Um, the University of Port Harcourt with their uh, uh, petroleum school can also be involved in that. That way you get some level of transparency, uh, research outcomes are, are, are built into the operations to lower the cost of production and make more money available for investors. That way the business will try. But again, there's lack of sincerity in the sector. There's lack of sincerity from uh, the various actors as we speak. And uh, these are issues that are, are, are making making it impossible. On a final note uh, on this issue, I've, also, I've always asked a question. 
if China has this problem of energy deficiency, if China was tagged as energy poor, what would China do? They will break all the rules and make sure that their uh, mineral refineries are functional, are proliferated all over the country so that the products can be really available. So I'm of the opinion that rather than criminalize some of these uh, persons who are involved in the, in the demand and supply chain of uh, refineries, at times, at times I wonder what, what uh, solutions they want to solve, what solutions are bringing to the table when they burn tankers for that polluting the environment. Uh, that they are carrying illicit products, they are carrying illegal products, and then they, they confiscate uh, products. There are sections in the Petroleum Industry Act that are very clear about how you dispose of uh, uh, products that are con confiscated. If these are brought on board, I think our country will move forward. Currently, Nigerians are in pain. Uh, we can't get any supply. It's very expensive. Somebody earns less than $200 a day. As a university professor, you see, a professor at the university earns less than $200. Thirty-five dollars uh, in a year, in a month, two hundred thirty-five thousand dollars. And then, how much do you use to fuel your vehicle? You can you fuel your vehicle, you do school runs. How much? Are you? So, the Nigerians are in pain, and the solutions are right there before us. Proliferate the entire place. License, give appropriate technology to those who are willing. We will give a moratorium. I give a moratorium for say three, four, five years for those who are willing to bring up uh, one thousand barrels per day. Uh, modular ref uh, uh, mini refineries that can be scaled up, and then let them let them have access to crude, tie them to uh, 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 modular uh, marginal feeds, and then uh, we have a variety of products everywhere, and possibly export these products. The technology is not rocket science, but the politics have to be right. They must have to be political will. These are my honest opinion about the issue. Experiences from the past as revealed that the Nigerian government might not be the best business managers. Public opinion even went as far to say the government should keep its hands off business. Hence, it was a well-received news when the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited NNPCL, revealed it was seeking private companies for the operation and maintenance of its botanical refineries in River State. The NNPC disclosed this on a post on X, formerly Twitter. The idea of government running public finance is a sort agency or sort establishment that is, is not workable in Nigeria anymore. So, but Nigeria should encourage private partnership or private ownership. Let, let it not be one or people load those refineries like Portacourt, let's even worry, all this, they should be privatized. You can say we are now suffering on a serious note, the issue of the scarcity of fuel, And this makes Nigerians are suffering on a serious note. Yes, so I think is better that Nigeria should do something about this scenario. Nigeria cannot manage their, 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 their refinery. Is it not better they should sell it out? If they sell it out, I am 100% sure that the owner will maintain it better and the, 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 the fuel will be assorted in the country and the masses will not be suffering. I know that, I know corruption cannot finish, but they should not go on privatization because if they do the privatization, the thing will go bad more and more because we have tried on Nepal and other things it does not work so Nigerians should mind the companies and then manage the company themselves federal government should handle the team themselves and know how to take care of their the populace instead of saying the profit because they have tried on other things it does not work so I don't see any need of privatizing it by privatization is it a total privatization that the government is going to take who government is going to privatize part of the refinery so that it will still have a role to determine how much and what quantity will be out in circulation and also to control how much product will go outside the country. If it is a total privatization, I think government should have a rethink. But if you look at the agencies that have been privatized in this country, most of them are not working as it's supposed to. Because the way Nigeria privatize their own thing here is different. Because we, particularly Nigeria, we are not discipline. So if you allow this fuel, this refineries to be in the hands of Nigerians again, there will be no different. So to me, if they want to privatize it, I welcome the idea of privatization, but it does not mean it must be Nigeria that will handle it. The government will just uh, uh, trust somebody on uh, a particular agency and will leave the person without monitoring. 
and that bring down all of our economic, all of our uh, problems that we are now facing. If the government stand up and say that, okay, now, anything that we are now doing, the monitoring team will, will be there, and that monitoring team too will be monitored again. That's check and balancing. That will bring better things to win Nigeria. Uh, Energy issues are, are national security issues everywhere. Uh, if you want to, if you look at, for example, solar panels are very cheap in Nigeria. And I've always a very cheap in Nigeria. And if you try to uh, compete with the foreign companies that are bringing the products to Nigeria, you find yourself uh, running at uh, running into um, uh, murky waters. The reason is that energy is subsidized everywhere in the world, even in the developed world, especially for production. It's subsidized, so the products are cheaper. And then the all think about is how to uh, fruit and bring the products here. So there must be a concerted uh, efforts by by the government. Uh, to set up clusters. Uh, for example, if you are doing uh, 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 clusters and then bring in the private sector and uh, community based, this, 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 this can drive it. Uh, why is Petrobras doing very well in, in, in Brazil? Uh, and again, uh, Aramco, Saudi Aramco, not far away from here, in Saudi Arabia here, they are doing very well as private companies. So the NMPC is expected to, to run in the same vein. Especially when they look at when we when they emphasize competencies, when they say, when, when competent people are put to man, most of this is not an issue of a quota system where you bring in people in terms of quota, and a certain certain section of the country feels oh we are the owners of the oil, so our people must be there. Everything should be done in a competent manner and run as a business. So I, I strongly support the private sector, and again institutions should be tied to them, a consortium that have. Uh, uh, if you're a, a university with uh, uh, with uh, competent uh, um, academics who have industrial experience, uh, this will, the, a good example is the is Nigerian uh, the Dubai Natural Gas Project. They are doing excellently well, and um, why can't that model be run with the NMPC uh, and uh, every other uh, sector in the economy? Again, let's compare the NMPC to other private companies, Seplat and the rest of them. They are all they are all on the rise. So what? Why? Why can't the NBC do the same? So I think it all comes back to uh, putting square pegs in square holes, and um, running running along with the industry standards, and then things we uh, we get better. Well, as we speak, Nigerians are in pain, and uh, there has to be some quick fixes. And for me, we have always advocated that mini refineries should be pushed to come to commission, and then in a, in a very short uh, cycle. Giving moratorium and then enabled by appropriate technology to start uh, producing products for for the local communities to uh, as energy resources. Then we cannot look at after having some level of uh, energy uh, resilient, uh, so energy uh, sufficiency. Then we cannot look at uh, transition. Cost of pump price when the refinery start functioning is also a cause of concern, since there is widespread worry. That the government often doesn't make people friendly decisions. The truth is that I, I can't speak for the NMPC. Um, uh, I'll speak as a consumer of uh, this product and an interested uh, stakeholder. Uh, so the truth is that it's, it's all demand and supply. If there is a supply, um, of course, uh, there's a lot of demand for petroleum products because Nigeria currently is an energy poor country. Energy poor means that we can't really service our our uh, population uh, uh, at the current state with what we have, the infrastructure we have on ground and the, and the current uh, uh, demand and supply equation is not in favor of uh, meeting up the demand. So uh, as a consumer of, uh, of these products, uh, I can speak from that standpoint. So if these products, if they say the refineries are working, then where are the products going to? Uh, who, are the, who are the products servicing? So these issues will be clear uh, um, in, in the public space if there is actual uh, um, uh, so production of this uh, demand. But again, um, even though we are energy, uh, we, we have a crude oil in supply and everything, uh, the question I've always asked is that if you are in the market and you are drilling crude oil, which of them will be most interesting to you? Would you want to refine in country and sell in Naira? or you want to sell uh, uh, quickly in uh, the crude oil in dollars and uh, make your money return, go back to production and go in. So these are the, these are the questions that we need to ask uh, Nigeria. These are the questions we need to ask the NNPP and some other uh, private investors who are interested in coming, coming into the space uh, to, to provide these uh, uh, products.
So until we have a sincere conversation, we will keep having these speculations and it's not going to help Nigeria. I am aware that there is a, a ministerial committee uh, to bring in um, small, mini, mini, mini and small refineries. Um, so at the level of the Ministry of Petroleum Resources, headed by the permanent, the permanent secretary. Uh, the question is that what has happened to the report that uh, the committee has sent? So I happen to be a member of that committee, uh, and we are eager to see the uh, action of government and the reports that we made uh, as at that time. So that report clearly stated out the strategy to bring in uh, small and mini refineries, which can be community based and they can do what they want to do. Um, uh, they, they can be able to do. Uh, production uh, at many scales and able to supply the local demands. The truth is that if all those refineries are working, by my own numbers, uh, they will meet our needs and we will be able to export if they are, if they are doing their full capacity. Um, a lot of the capacity numbers that have been put, that have been banded in Nigeria were false um, because of the subsidy regime, which was a dark hole. Um, so it, it, it it creates a window for money to move when you say you are actually consuming more than you're consuming. Uh, that, that, that is on one side. The issue of people who are boiling crude in the creeks require a careful approach. Number one, people, a lot of them are stealing the crude. When they steal the crude, they boil it with such a technology that there is a lot of environmental challenges from their activities. Beyond that is that there is also a limit to what you can produce from that boiling. They don't do more than diesel. And while diesel is important for, the, for, for us as, as a people, for now, as a source of uh, energy, the main thing we need to shoot for is PMS. Those boiling crude cannot produce PMS. So it's, it, it doesn't solve our problem. However, the kind of intervention that I would like to see uh, with those people is to see if there is a way we can organize the ones who are serious-minded about business, who knows that raw materials should not be stolen, it should be paid for, and we can encourage them you know, to uh, to do the proper thing. So they can produce, you know, have all of this modular refinery arrangement. They can do small, small production of diesel. And, and, and they will have a market for, for whatever little production they are doing. But I'm also aware that a large number of them are used to raw material cost, zero, because they steal the crude. And then they boil, damage the environment mercilessly, and sell and make money is a, is, a, is a selfish venture, you know. So what is leading people in that direction? Government must look into that. Why are these people uh, behaving like that? I mean, there will always be criminals in every every society. Anyway. But the issue of um, uh, uh, resource control, the issue of um, being able to people from whose, whose communities these items are coming from, these, these resources are coming from, being able to give to them. If you go to some of these communities in the Niger Delta, 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 you will weep for them. So is it the state of those communities that is fueling the kind of practices that we are seeing with all these guys that are boiling crude? If it is, then between the government and their own leadership, because I know government has also made several efforts with the Ministry of Niger Delta, we've had the uh, NDDC, and sorry to say, it appears as if there is the, the, the elite of those societies are, are also part of the problem. Because money has been moving, just that people's lives have not been transformed. Billions upon billions of Naira have been made available a trillion under some of those schemes. But when you still go to those communities today, you ask yourself, where are those money that government have spent in this, you know, voted into this community? We are the projects. There are over 13,000 projects for which money, either in full or in part, were, 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 were paid by this government, by the government, did not get done in the Niger Delta. So it's a fairly complex space to look at. Um, but if, if, if government 
want to have a renewed effort at this uh, uh, crude boiler, there's, there's nothing wrong in looking at their case again. What we must avoid is a situation in which people steal or people damage the environment by their activities. As Nigeria strives to fix the issues of energy poverty, concerns are raised about environmentally related risks. People living around areas that crude oil mining take place have oftentimes decried the impact on their environment and continuous negligence of the federal government and Niger Delta Development Commission NDDC. According to a report by Arjun's France Press AFP, the year of 2023 was the hottest on record, with the increase in Earth's surface temperature nearly crossing the critical threshold of 1.5 Celsius. Climate change intensified heat waves, droughts, wildfires across the planet, and pushed the global thermometer 1.48 degrees Celsius above the pre-industrial benchmark. The Carpinius finding came one month after a climate agreement was reached at COP28 in Dubai, calling for the gradual transition away from fossil fuel, the main cause of climate warning. Since Nigeria's primary source of energy is fossil fuel, do we have to worry about contributing to climate change? Well, I recently finished my, my fellowship on climate action in India, a non-school of climate action. And one of the key things that uh, that came out of some of our, uh, our discussions on the environment and uh, energy resources is the is the issue of uh, the, the, the atmosphere not having boundaries. The atmosphere not having boundaries. There are no boundaries in the atmosphere. So something is happening in Port Harcourt, it has an impact in Delta states. That and the in Cameroon. So, uh, environment is of major concern. Out of the three wheels that drive what they call sustainability, which is the environment, economics, and also and social, uh, it's is the, the 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 environment is the largest and uh, the most prominent. Everything environment is everything outside of you, uh, the person considering the environment. Everything outside of uh, the person of the environment. So everything around. You. Is environment everything within the wise environment so the point is that yes environment is a major issue but uh, again there are companies which are striving to what they call net zero net zero is that you don't add uh, uh, extra um, uh, carbon or to the environment but rather you work within uh, that form of net zero there are the zero parts that are going on for some of the oil and gas producing uh, uh, companies as we speak okay so efforts have to be made and they have to be incentivized uh, for example, there is carbon credit um, uh, infrastructure that is in place. The government can enable such kind of, not just uh, conferences or uh, signing accords without uh, necessarily putting in the strategy and the tactics to uh, the task, the tactics to to bring the strategies to to, to, to fall. There is there need to be concerted effort to reward companies which are already um, heading towards net zero. Uh, the other thing again is that clean one uh, it's not only about just for software uh, there have been serious um, um, scientific research uh, to show that what we should be talking about is uh, clean uh, cleaner energy uh, uh, usage not necessarily against for software because if you do as we speak today there's still a lot they still lack clarity in, in the in, in what we call renewable energy for example if you look at uh, solar panels if you look at where the mind is silicon, and then you look at what they call what they call life cycle analysis, you still find out that there are some of these uh, uh, sources that are being uh, um, called green. They are not necessarily green. And again, let's look at the contribution to pollution. Africa contributes as of today contributes less than three three to four percent of uh, of the pollution. So, uh, how much the pledges have been made by advanced countries who were uh, uh, who have, have self-indicted themselves in pollution, polluting the world uh, up to this now. They made a lot of pledges to uh, uh, to sustain uh, the researches and also developments of uh, green energy. How much of these uh, country, uh, countries? How much? How much? How much? How much have they put on the table uh, compared to their pledges? Okay. So these are these are these are issues. So uh, you can't just say you are living for safe well. It's like advice said now. Uh, you 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 wearing your white clothes, um, uh, and and then somebody is wearing a white cloth, then you get to a dangerous spot where you need to cross dirty murky waters, and then you you carry the other person, you cross the waters, and after you cross, the person say you are dirty because you are stained by the water. Well, you have you have the person.
going to get to where the person is going to. So the question is how much of renewable energy is used for renewable energy infrastructure and equipment. So there needs to be clear, uh, uh, sincere conversation about this uh, about these issues. I believe that uh, if you if you can clean up your act, for example, using gas, uh, using gas, are you able to um, uh, like blue hydrogen? Blue hydrogen is hydrogen gotten from uh, from uh, petroleum uh, uh, products. Okay, uh -huh. then to an extent you are you are having some level of uh, uh, green energy, greener energy production, uh, less pollution coming from your. So the, the, the I, I think the the efforts, especially from Nigeria, is to look at cleaner production of uh, of uh, energy. How much gas can we supply to to uh, some of these? Uh, 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 generation companies, electricity general companies, so that they can produce more electricity and make electricity more available to people, and then they are able to contain whatever influence and whatever uh, uh, greenhouse gases that come out of the operations. That will you reduce uh, the carbon footprint. So efforts should be towards reduction of carbon footprint using appropriate technology, uh, and then again having this conversation about how to move forward rather than. I just say for will go out like that. So go if you feel that for what what are you gonna what are you gonna be using? Which 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 of them are available to Nigeria? And again, again I keep uh, just to reiterate, energy is a national security issue. So it's what you have that you can use uh, to stabilize. After you have stabilized, then you cannot talk about uh, uh, transition. Where are we transiting for, for in Nigeria? Are we transiting from? Uh, for an energy poor country, uh, energy poor country nation, to an energy uh, uh, sufficient country, or to greener energy. So first and foremost, we need to stabilize. Uh, we need the support of the powers that be, the uh, developed nations, either in the west or in the east or in the in Asian countries. We need their support in terms of finance and also technology, uh, because again, there are no boundaries in the skies. So whatever we do here in Nigeria affects. Uh, other parts of the continent. So there, there has to be a, a synergy in a sincere manner so that we can tackle this uh, uh, problem. I believe there is global warming. I believe there is uh, uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, the greenhouse gases are having effects in the sky. I, I know that evidence to support that. But again, what approach are we using? Okay, if we remove the politics and we face uh, pure technology and science, I think we can make some headway. Despite the harsh economic times, Nigerians are still advised to be patient and look up to better times to come. And to stop putting so much pressure on the president for a magical fix for the challenges that seem so insurmountable. Should this advice be heeded? I don't have adequate information to talk about sincerity, but I do know that um, efforts have been made. Like I mentioned, there's a ministerial committee uh, set up by the current administration. I'm not a politician. Uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a technocrat. I know I've attended meetings at the Federal Ministry of uh, at the Ministry of Petroleum Resources, yeah, headed by the Commerce Secretary, because I was sent by my university to represent. And there's a professor from ABU Zaria and the staff from uh, Petroleum Training Institute, and all the agencies that are involved in petroleum, oil, and gas operations. They are all present in that committee. Uh, I think the committee at the stage, our report has been prepared and submitted for a while. Uh, so, talking about sincerity, there was recent, recently there was a publication on the, to get uh, the private sector-driven operatorship of the Potakot refinery. I learned worry refinery might come on board too. My, if the government is listening, my appeal is that uh, people who are passionate about developing this country should be involved. For example, universities within the, that environment, if it is one percent or two percent, they should be part of that kind of consortium. Uh, so that to bring some level of transparency. Uh, if this if these are done, um, yeah, things can get better. I can always I've always believed it can always be better, and I always look at things as half full rather than half empty. So if these efforts by the government uh, have been done, and then the the the, co the conference that was uh, put up by the previous administration, uh, even using the office of the uh, vice president then to drive it uh, with Senator Etienne. If those recommendations are reviewed and worked upon, then we have proliferation of uh, adequately sustained uh, mini refineries all over uh, Nigeria. And again, bringing academia in, and then we can have some energy production because there's a danger. There's danger coming for coming forth in the near future. 
foreign direct investment will go down for oil and gas assets. Foreign direct investment will go down. And if those foreign direct investments go down, uh, what are we going to hang on? So why don't we do small scale refineries and then within the cluster of 25 uh, of these refineries connected by waterways, uh, possibly light rail, uh, the, the ones they cannot refine are collected together and sent to what they call a, a bigger refinery within that location that can take up those things or recycling plants that can take them up and provide and, and process those plants and they are brought back to uh, uh, to the level where consumers can use them in their respective way in a very clean manner. If these are done, I think the uh, and this can be done quickly. All we need is the political will. And then uh, putting competent people in the right positions, not uh, favoring one or two people. If this is done, Nigerians will see it clearly what is happening, and the question about sincerity will never be there because action speaks louder than words.